The NBA is pathetic and dumb for allowing this to happen. This is figurative blood on your hands. No excuses. I saw a tweet that pondered the idea that the NBA is potentially afraid or hesitant about the idea of pushing Ant Edwards more so as a face or the future face of the league. And I hadn't thought about it a ton, but come to think of it, we can all agree the existence and impact of propaganda and good or bad PR in our league. Where all that really comes from, I'm not sure in every case, but it certainly exists. And sure, Minnesota, not a big market, but neither is Oklahoma City or Indiana. So SGA is playing MVP ball, no doubt, Halliburton started the season on a tear and established himself as an early MVP candidate. Yes, I am old enough to remember the in-season tournament. And he gets hurt, cools off fairly significantly, and yet appears on Basketball References MVP tracker at 9 as of today compared to Anthony Edwards who appears on the tracker at number... Oh... Oh, oh, Rudy can make it at 10. That's very nice. So clearly we can establish that this omission is not based on the market size. Rudy Gobert, the face of the T-Wolves, clearly, he's at number 10 here. Anthony Edwards, nowhere to be found. Okay, so maybe this list in particular here isn't entirely the NBA's fault per se. I actually have no clue what determines this list or who is making this, but uh, nah, that's gotta be a mistake. Well, it is a mistake, but at least NBA.com has him on their race to the MVP ladder at number... Oh, okay. He's not on the list, but he's in the next five behind Devin Booker and Bam Adebayo. Bam Adebayo is a tremendously underrated player, but can we be serious for a second, please? Of course, Rudy Gobert is on this list again. The analytics crown prince of defense and impact, and this right here is the reason we're so screwed up. You know what? It's fine. Because Vegas knows better than anyone. Yes, there we go. Some Ant-Man representation. You love to see it, and you're winning $1,600 with a $10 bet on FanDuel, so yeah, they're still aware that this isn't going to happen. I really do wonder what happens, though, if the T-Wolves finish real strong with some signature wins, and he gets another incredible game-winning highlight. And then Cad has just been out the whole time, so he's raising his game, he's raising his numbers. You can see they're right here. You know, they're not too far behind OKC and Denver. I mean, surely they'd have to give him some consideration. But Minnesota has been sitting first for almost the whole year. And we haven't seen Ant representation in real MVP discussions. It's always Shea, Joker, Tatum. And that Tatum logic... I know no team is touching Boston right now, but it's the whole best player on the best team idea, which is interesting because Jalen Brown has been playing arguably better than Tatum in the last 10 games. But regardless, they had the best record in the conference, the Wolves did, most of the season. And Ant was definitely the alpha, closer, playmaker on both ends of the floor, adds excitement and highlight factor to the game one of the all-time greatest eye test players in my life. And that's on and off the court. The guy's demeanor, approach to the game. The team is excellent. He's a leadership figure, not above coaching or criticism from teammates, exhibits a great admiration for the game. The guy is everything you could want as somebody you may want to put out there to represent what this league becomes in five to 10 years, because I can guarantee he will be among the players at the very forefront. The truth is that Ant is not the stat sheet stuffer that some of his contemporaries are. He's not getting a 30-point triple-double every night like Luka. He isn't necessarily gunning for the award like a SGA resorting to cheap tactics in order to grab a meaningless 30-piece in a recent home loss to Indy. Ant raises his game against good competition. He makes plays that don't appear in the box score. When he was asked recently about what he needs to do to appear in Defensive Player of the Year or all defense conversations, Ant replied that media voters just simply need to watch more Wolves games. He uh, those kind of goals. We see like nights like tonight, like you have that capability. What do you think has to happen? In order for me to get that? To get into that conversation. Um, I think people got to watch more Minnesota Timberwolves games <laughs> as far as whoever the fuck the voters are. Um, <laughs> I think... Yeah, they just got to watch the games um, because 
it's not like my first time doing this. Like I have nights like this all the time where somebody get hot or their best player get hot and I go shut them down the rest of the game and you know nobody sees it but y'all. And I think that goes into my books of all defensive team, but nobody sees it, only y'all see it. So I think they gotta watch more games. He's right, the guy is among the elite perimeter defenders in basketball. The catch is that he can do that and average 25, but I get it. 25 isn't 30. It's too bad he doesn't gun for 50 against the Detroits and Washingtons of the world. Because then he could maybe get up to 30, because that's what really matters. No, it couldn't be more important to maybe play the role your team needs you to play in order to win basketball games. Anyway, it's just disappointing that box score averages and analytics take so much precedence over eye test conclusions. I understand that you need all of it. But the truth is that you're not watching Minnesota all year if you're telling me that this guy isn't top 10 most valuable player. I mean, Halliburton and Booker missed a ton of games. Ants played 63. And yet, these guys somehow have priority over him. NBA, do better at marketing talent. This guy is arguably once in a generation. For American hoops, you don't get a guy like this every year in the draft. And he's practically an Iron Man early in his career. It's exactly what you want for your product. Do better. And when it comes to Rudy, this is just the analytics talking. The guys don't have to watch games. They can just look at a bunch of numbers and say that Rudy is such a good defensive player. Yes, obviously he's a great defensive player. What is he contributing on offense? Is he carrying a team? How on God's green earth could this man be more valuable to your team than Anthony Edwards? It makes no sense at all.